welcome all uh, dr janardhanan sir from goa university he is delivering our lecture i request uh, dr ajit vartak sir uh, to introduce dr janardhanan sir dr vartak sir please a warm welcome to all of you for this evening session it is my pleasure to introduce today's guest speaker eminent taxonomist professor janardhanan sir uh, janardhanan sir is a uh, did his masters and mphil from university of madras and then phd from bharatiya university coimbatore then he obtained initial training as a research fellow at the botanical survey of india southern circle coimbatore from july 84 to december 88 subsequently worked on endemic plants of the western ghats their taxonomy phytogeography and conservation in 1991 he joined goa university and retired in 2022 as senior professor school of biological sciences and biotechnology goa university presently he is holding the position of chairperson goa state research foundation <coughs> he has published more than 90 papers in national and international journals he has co-authored four books he has guided 12 students for their phds then <coughs> he is a member of many uh, committees from at goa university he has held various positions such as officiating vice chancellor goa university dean faculty of life sciences and environment goa university member of executive council academic council university court director digital learning initiatives goa university and chairman as well as member of various committees he has been on the committee of iapt special committee for registration of plant names from 2012 to 17 he was member of various committees of csir dbt moef and cc nba and serb in his honor six new species are named utricularia janardhanami curculigo janardhanami kuskuta janardhanami isko iske mam janardhanami mormodica janardhanami and dipkedi jane srirangi he has he was conferred many awards some of them are goa state teacher award for excellence in higher education then told to see for the year 2022 from east himalayan society for spermatophyte taxonomy he has also received professor v v sivarajan gold medal of the indian and association of angiograph taxonomy in the year 2005 for his contribution to the field of angiosperm taxonomy with this short introduction now i request professor janardhanam sir to deliver his talk sir uh, thank you uh, vartak sir uh, thank you very much for this uh, opportunity so this it's a good uh, great initiative and uh, thank you for giving me this opportunity uh, today uh, i have been asked to talk on invasive weeds uh, i thought it's a very good uh, uh, topic yeah required one especially when everyone is talking about climate change uh, this is an important issue which we are supposed to discuss so now we will uh, with the help of a few slides uh, we will discuss this When we say invasive plants, uh, they are all weeds. Not all the weeds are invasive. They are invasive because they dominate because they are smart. That's why I named it as dominance of the smartest. Okay. So when we see, look at the next slide. What are these invasive plants? Uh, uh, someone is changing the slides. Yeah. Uh, this is the definition of course there are several definitions available this is adapted from uh, uh, the table an invasive weed is an alien species that by its establishment or spread has become injurious to plants or that by risk analysis is shown to be potentially injurious to plants it's very simple uh, if we can simplify it uh, An invasive weed is the one 
whose presence and establishment and presence in an area will uh, put other plants at risk. That's all. This is the uh, simplest definition. Uh, and we will go. Uh, there are a lot of uh, publications uh, coming out of research that is being carried out throughout the globe. And in our next slide, we will see how some topmost weeds are also present in our country. What are they? And how they are establishing? What are their traits? And how they are affecting the local vegetation? In every simple possible form, we will discuss. Uh, if you look at uh, some topmost weeds, invasive weeds throughout the world, Romalina odorata, I'll give a few names um, Lantana camera, Parthenia, Icornia, Crassipus, now it is Pontinaria Crassipus. Uh, so like this, uh, there are some weeds, and all of them are present in our area. Now, let us start with the Promolina moderator uh, so that all of us can connect uh, which plants we are talking about. It belongs to the family Asteraceae, otherwise Compositae. Uh, this is very important because why it become invasive? Uh, it also uh, depends on to which family they belong. So, we will come to that point a little later. Locally, it is known as a Ranmari. In some areas, uh, this is known as communist grass, but whereas in Goa, it is known as Congress grass. In other areas, some other weed is known as Congress grass. Uh, whatever we will not talk about. Um, especially some parts of Goa and Maharashtra, it is also known as a Ranmari, uh, which clearly shows that uh, it is uh, actually, you know, disturbing the forest, okay, literally. So with this uh, background, we will go and uh, we will see the next plant. Next slide, please. And if you look at the uh, next slide, this chromalina, we have uh, one of my students, uh, Dr. Bharat Patil, has carried out certain, uh, some work, especially in Goa and the surrounding regions. Uh, we are talking only about this particular area right now because as we uh, go on increase our area, uh, the uh, certain characteristics will differ. Uh, 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 I, we will talk about it a little later. When we look at it, wherever this red is there, deep red, in this region, these are the areas where the chromagena uh, is certainly present. We will put it that way. Now you will see here, this is Goa, this particular part, and uh, surrounding Goa, uh, we are discussing. And you will see that some red patches are there towards the coastal area, some red patches are uh, towards the western bars, on the top of the western bars. Now you look, look at the next figure here. Uh, how they are, actually this is, I have taken from his uh, thesis, uh, I happen to be supervising this work. And if you see, it is, it is showing bimodal distribution. At the lower one, you see, you know, uh, every 100 meter one class we have divided. And mostly it is present between coastal uh, sea level to 200 meter altitude. Then in mid altitude, uh, it is not there. And it is very, very bad. Whereas it spreads more uh, from 500 meters above to 800 meters. Why this bimodal distribution? Okay. Uh, if you actually clearly see that one, this is where the people are living uh, in between 200 to almost 500. These are the steep slopes. There are no villages or cities uh, as far as possible. There is no other economic activity which is going on there. Uh, otherwise, it also refers to that there is no disturbance. Okay. So we will come to one particular point now. Wherever there is disturbance, 
there is chromolinear. Okay, one. And beyond that, it is again less, though there is disturbance. Why? We have also worked out uh, using some EN models, environment and niche models, uh, which takes up so many things into account, including precipitation, uh, uh, the temperature, average uh, temperature, all those kind of things. And these are the areas where it is suitable for it. Beyond that, it is not suitable. Otherwise, uh, uh, no, sir, you have gone too far. Uh, yeah. Next slide, you can go. Loudest, uh, if it is audible, that's fine. If you see here, uh, okay, not in this slide, uh, we have seen that using environmental niche uh, models, uh, we need a lot of moisture for this weed to spread. Okay, that is why it is always seen on that western slopes of the western grass. Okay, this is what. Now, in this particular slide, what you are looking, uh, it is showing a slight decrease in number of herbs which are in the area uh, that has been occupied by that, uh, this species, that is chromalina odorata. Okay, that means it is going to affect the biodiversity there. Uh, as the time goes by, whatever uh, few herbs are there, they will also disappear. That is our speculation. Next slide, please. Okay. Now, the next species is Lantana camera, uh, which is very common. And uh, we have actually worked, out, worked on three different species. Chromolina moderata, Lantana camera, as well as Parthenium mistrophorus. Okay, this is common, which is introduced as uh, this one. I think uh, someone is going on changing the slides. I think one by one. Only when I say, please you change. And this is very common. Look at the characteristics here. You have two different uh, uh, colored flowers here. I will come to that a little bit later. Why this character is very important uh, for it to spread also. Uh, now, next slide, please. Yeah. You look at the lat altitude here, and it is mostly uh, present beyond the 600. Uh, not that it is not present at the coastal area. As an invasive weed occupying larger area, you will see above 600 uh, meter altitude. Okay? And uh, up to 1,000 meter altitude. Why is it uh, happening? Because it's uh, requirement, environmental parameters, uh, optimal parameters are different. That is being met at that particular uh, altitude. This is one. And second, uh, there is a correlation between canopy gap and uh, lantana patch size. As the canopy gap uh, increases, uh, sorry, canopy gap increases, uh, the uh, the patch size also increases. That is what it shows. Next slide, please. Yeah. Now we will go to the next, uh, this species, Parthenium histrophorus. Again, this belongs to Asteraceae, like a Chromolina odorata. Goa, in Goa, it is known as Congress grass, whereas uh, in a, uh, sorry, in other places it is known as Congress grass. In Goa, it is not that much. If you look at uh, the map here, it is beyond Goa, the invasiveness, mostly in drier areas like uh, Kolapur, Darwad. Since we didn't work towards Darwad, uh, we are not showing. We didn't take sample areas there, but it is there up to Bangalore, Coimbatore. It is on the uh, uh, other side, uh, what is it? Uh, uh, what uh, rain shade areas of Western Ghats, where is it is dry, cool areas. There, this species is spread. Now, as we compare these three species, we come to certain conclusion. What is it? Their invasiveness is not overlapping. 
the requirements are entirely different. One requires a lot of moisture, so it is uh, seen on the western slope of the western guts. Another one is on the peak of the western guts, where not that much of dampness uh, is required. And uh, Parthenium is on, is on the rain shed regions of the western guts, towards the east, okay, where uh, rainfall is less and it is a dry area and a cool area. That means every climatic area these weeds are spreading and they are destroying the biodiversity. Uh, next slide, please. This is another weed. Okay, earlier what we have seen, they are uh, actually herbs or shrubs. Sometimes a lantana can even climb uh, 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 almost to the canopy of uh, teak trees. Again, wherever there is disturbance, they are coming. Now you look at this. This is Mycania micrantha. It has got a lot of names. Uh, climbing hemp vine, uh, that is the common name. This is, uh, as the name suggests, it is a climber. It can climb even huge trees, which actually um, um, uh, occupies the canopy. It actually cuts off the light to the, uh, uh, the tree. Okay, that is how uh, it is actually spreading. And you look at the seeds here in the uh, uh, insect here, this one. Uh, it is like any other uh, astracy member. It has got a pappus hair. That means these seeds can spread by wind. Okay, wind dispersal. Right, so that it can be carried to longer distance. Uh, wherever the suitable uh, environment is there, it will germinate and establish. It will climb on the other trees because it requires plenty of sunlight. That's all. It will choke those plants. That means it is not only at the lower level and it can also climb on the trees. They can also choke the trees. That means nothing is safe when these invasive weeds are uh, spreading. Okay. Uh, we'll go to the next slide. This is common water hyacinth. Uh, everyone knows it as Icornia crassipus. Due to nomenclatural changes and taxonomic you know, treatment, it is now known as Pontideria crassipus. And uh, which, wherever it is there, it occupies the whole water body and it cuts off the light. A lot of uh, organic matter is produced by this. It has also got a certain positive aspects. It can accumulate uh, heavy metals. Uh, heavy metals comes from a lot of uh, you know, um, sewage, which enters into these bodies. Uh, so the, uh, literally eutrophication takes place. And to that, this also adds to the uh, carbon and the whole. No fish can survive because there will be uh, lesser oxygen available for them. There is no light available and phytoplanktons are not surviving. So small fish cannot survive. So the entire biodiversity is lost. Okay. And this is another weed. So we have seen terrestrial earlier, four species. Now this is in water body. Okay. That means both the terrestrial and water bodies uh, uh, these uh, invasive weeds are actually uh, taking away. Next slide, please. This is another, uh, Salvinia molesta. Sometimes within the same pond or uh, water body, both of them, Salvinia as well as Icornia, compete for each other. There are also few more weeds. Uh, they are just entering. Uh, I will not go and uh, discuss about them. This is a pteridophyte. This is not a uh, flowering plant. And both these species, both the Salvinia, uh, uh, of course, Salvinia produces a lot of spores. Then uh, it occupies the whole pond within uh, no time. Uh, even otherwise, the vegetative propagation, uh, so it occupies. Uh, whereas even in um, uh, Icornia, that is Pontideria, uh, you have uh, actually, you know, vegetative propagation, which contributes to that spread. Within no time, they can occupy the whole water body. 
uh, the local fish is gone uh, other aquatic species have gone now water birds which come for them now they don't get the proper food uh, so they will not be occupying these areas so it is actually some kind of a vortex uh, once they enter um, uh, the, uh, ever, uh, completely everything is lost okay uh, next one please this is the third one which occupies okay water cabbage or water lettuce we call this is an rac member apistia stratiotes again the same story so there are three species which normally we see in most of the water bodies which occupy completely the uh, those uh, ponds or pools or whatever it is and uh, choke them next one please okay now we have seen three of uh, uh, aquatic weeds and four of uh, actually terrestrial weeds invasive weeds though there are many i am not going into it especially if you see the pune areas you know uh, those kind of you have cosmos which is uh, spreading enormously and uh, uh, your own uh, pune that organization movement against biological invasions they are doing great work uh, in actually uprooting them uh, voluntary activities uh, that is a great uh, initiative anyway now let us ask this question how do they outperform native plants okay uh, because there are plants which have been surviving for thousands and millions of years in this area how a plant which comes from some other country uh, uh, outsmarts outperforms eliminates them and occupies that particular place there must be something uh, special with them what are those okay let us look at those characters next slide please right there are certain characters what we call as life history traits the uh, right hand side figure i have taken it's a schematic uh, diagram uh, from your published paper i have given the acknowledgement there uh, don't worry about this much okay uh, it is uh, not everything is explained but something is explained but look at the uh, points which i have given one is allelopathy these plants have some special chemicals secreted by them sometimes they are volatiles sometimes they are some other substances which mixes with the soil but they are detrimental either to the germination or to the establishment of other species though they are from the same area one then their inflorescence pattern and the pollinators we will look at them okay then abundant seed set and dispersal pattern adaptation i will talk about that again gregarious growth they occupy large areas once they come and uh, establish there then they go on spread there is no looking back then endophyte association with them so all these things we will see next slide please yeah allelopathy i have uh, told already it's a lot of experiments to prove lot of publications that have proved that uh, allelopathy is happening allelopathy is one of the major factor for the establishment spread of the invasive weeds okay that's fine i i have already explained yes these are the special chemicals including volatiles secreted by them which are detrimental to other plants especially the native plants so so okay, they cannot establish there but we should also ask the questions okay we take it whether these plants produce the same chemicals in their native range or not not many publications are there on this we have to ask this question if they are producing or not why they are not uh, invasive in their own native area 
why they are invasive only when they go to some other area this is question number 1 we have to have lot of answers to this a uh, lot of experiments have to be done why are plants susceptible only in recipient communities uh, all the studies show that uh, they are not affecting other plants in their native area they are affecting only in the areas where they have entered these communities we call it as recipient communities which have received this invasive species okay why only these are susceptible that is an interesting question maybe in their in this recipient communities uh, they, there were no chemicals like this one whatever chemicals are secreted by other species they are already uh, used for those things and they have overcome those chemicals so there is a balance whereas all of a sudden this new kind of chemicals probably Uh, which they are getting uh, they are not able to cope up okay this is one day a speculation right because when we say allelopathic uh, chemical uh, uh, they are actually it is not a single chemical uh, it is a combination of chemicals right uh, so we don't know how it works uh, in what way and all so these are the questions which remain which are to Uh, we have to actually work out by conducting certain experiments so this is one probably all of us see uh, sometimes what happen no um, in some area uh, some even if there are some uh, restaurants and all no those people who are in that area regularly they may not even notice that there is a smell a new comer who is coming from somewhere else for example western countries sometimes they cannot even actually you know uh, understand this smell they get to you know some kind of uh, nauseating this one or giddiness i'll smell they cannot take up it is like that probably we have to ask this questions next slide please okay i told about inflorescences and pollinators if you look at most of them they are all inflorescences they are not single flowers what does it mean in inflorescence you, you see you no know, here in chromalina each one is an inflorescence there are uh, scores and hundreds of flowers in each inflorescence and all these inflorescences are in a very big inflorescence together okay that means they can produce lot of seeds one second how it is related to pollinators for example a butterfly has to visit as an example or rather than it visiting single flowers for nectar the night has to search for another flower nectar it has to spend some energy if it comes to this kind of inflorescences it has to just turn those who have noticed uh, the butterflies or bees or whatever on this kind of uh, flowers inflorescences they will not fly immediately back fly back or go away they will be sitting there and taking their proboscis out and putting in a next inflorescence you understand no uh, that means to take more nectar they need not fly to some other plant or little away they save their energy this is an important factor so most of the uh, plants which are actually invasive have got this kind of floral structure that means all flowers are arranged in inflorescence if uh, not in thousand at least they are in hundreds and any pollinator who visits gets plenty of nectar without spending more energy for the same amount of nectar this is one second no 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 sir please go back to the same slide uh, because lot of things are there earlier i was talking about uh, lantana you have seen two kinds of flowers there two different colors but in some uh, you have seen no some cream color and some pink color in some inflorescence all of them are pink it is actually you no know, these are all the indicators uh, cream colored flower in that case is youngest one where nectar is available 
and uh, pink color is the one uh, which already they are uh, pollinated uh, probably nectar is not available why it is like that because these are all again message to the pollinators okay what is the message message is very simple right uh, these are the flowers in which nectar don't unnecessarily search here and there by experience they know which is our, the one which is having nectar second then why they have to keep those flowers change colors one they have to keep flowers because it is again an intimation to them that uh, okay uh, from distance they can see otherwise if there's there are all small flowers only few flowers are there distance from distance they cannot see okay this is an inflorescence you come here as you approach then you will say okay this is where the nectar is unnecessarily you don't search okay uh, that is the indication you understand so like this you take a cosmos again which is astracy you take a parthenium which is again astracy plenty of flowers capital m inflorescence that is how it goes even in lantana though it is verbenacy this kind of mechanism okay uh, so that you don't bother the pollinators you straight away tell come here i am here but at the same time this is where actually the nectar is in these flowers there is no nectar this is the message now i am asking a critical question if the native pollinators are mostly attracted by this because they need not spend much energy to take the nectar if some native flowers are also flowering in the same locality who will pollinate them whether it will not affect their seed set is it also indirectly not contributing uh, to uh, the spread of the invasive weeds because native plants are not able to produce the seeds whereas invasive uh, plants are able to produce the seeds because they are able to attract and retain the pollinators with them so these are certain questions uh, we are supposed to ask next one please yeah uh, this again i have taken from this publication i have given the citation when we say allelochemicals etc etc they don't sometimes they may operate independently but mostly they operate for example they may there may be allelochemicals uh, the, the it may be an inflorescence to attract the pollinators it you understand no all of them work together and in this case in this paper they have shown how allelochemicals and endophytes are working together for the spread of uh, or establishment of uh, uh, exotic weeds and uh, how they are promoting their invasiveness so because each one uh, you know no endophytes especially the mycorrhiza and all they contribute uh, to their um, uh, what is that nutrients as compared to already you are actually you no know, putting allele chemicals other plants are not there uh, you are actually not allowing other plants to establish there and whatever uh, endophytes are there they will be entering here and whatever nutrients are there they will be taking and supplying it to us you look at the chain see that is how they establish that is how they become exotic okay it's a very uh, uh, nice paper uh, people can go through uh, next one please okay there is also like this there are uh, several factors before i go to this enemy release hypothesis i will also go to the uh, propagules we have already seen most of them are uh, actually you know what uh, uh, astracy members they produce uh, seeds uh, with the papus right fruits with the papus papus is uh, no actually parachute uh, mechanism and in the air they will be in the wind they will be carried to a uh, couple of kilometers okay and now you imagine uh, a situation i have already made a statement that wherever there is a little disturbance if they happen to go there they will establish very immediate uh, immediately 
if it is not if it is an undisturbed area it is very very difficult for them to establish because there is a shade uh, there is no loose soil already there are certain plants they will not allow them because already they have established so disturbance is an important factor okay during our studies we have noticed uh, okay outside kuramalina is there in disturbed area then you start walking into forest somewhere inside the forest either due to illegal activities or due to natural calamities maybe some trees have fallen down whatever it is some disturbance is there again we see one or two kilometers inside uh, the kuramalina established okay uh, probably wind has carried them or probably some animals have also you know it must have got stuck up and gone there uh, they must have carried we don't know uh, so this is very interesting one second look at uh, lantana already we have seen how it attracts the pollinators that means there is going to be a lot of uh, uh, fruit set and these fruits are not wind dispersed uh, this one but they are all actually berries okay i have seen lot of minas when they are you no know, they are in uh, you know you must have seen the uh, fruits of lantana uh, they are in bunch uh, if uh, one actually any bird which goes there uh, especially minas uh, etc uh, it's a plenty of food for them they will be going on actually uh, uh, swallowing them and uh, you know uh, then they fly and they go on disperse this is seeds and the retaining capacity uh, is only about 20 minutes it varies from species to species on a, on an average about 20 minutes so in this 20 minutes they will not be sitting there in the same place they will be flying they will take few more uh, this one again they fly or uh, they will be going on uh, dispersing the seeds this is another thing which we are supposed to uh, notice some mechanism then as we have seen already in the case of aquatic uh, plants like both uh, uh, salvinia uh, as well as uh, icornia uh, vegetative propagation adds to it okay uh, stolons get uh, no disentangled and it will be going on they become individual plants okay and uh, whereas uh, salvinia also produces lot of spores Uh, which they will become it is also both vegetative as well as plenty of spores okay so there we stop now we come to this enemy release hypothesis or oh, this is very uh, interesting uh, phenomena again what is this enemy release hypothesis well, let us actually put uh, though this analogy may not hold good uh, but we will also see just as an analogy um you look at uh, any one's own growth uh, who will be the people who will be jealous of your own growth or uh, who will be trying to put the hurdle these are the people who are in your surroundings probably your own relatives or uh, friends am i right uh, uh, they may be your uh, uh, close relatives uh, you know kith and kin uh, well, let us say third person is not at all bothered what you are and who you are same way in its uh, native area they have lot of enemies probably closely related species or uh, other species which are there in their area um, they will not allow you to grow they will keep you in control you keep someone else in control uh, so it's a balance that is one of the reasons biodiversity increases the balance has to be there Um, after all allelo uh, allelopathy is not uh, bad uh, and uh, pulling each other is not bad in those communities because they keep uh, each one in balance that is how the biodiversity increases whereas when they come to new area this is one uh, uh, hypothesis okay they don't have any of their enemies which were keeping them in check you understand so you go and settle elsewhere 
uh, you will say no there is no one who is jealous of you who is pulling you who is putting hurdle and um, you know there is no one to compare you with uh, them so you grow very fast that is how in most of the places uh, the settlers the migrants are more successful even among the humans right um, in most of the places uh, and cases it is the truth same here there is no one uh, this is known as enemy release the plant has been released from its enemy in the new area so the enemy release hypothesis posits that alien species will experience increased invasion success in novel habitats that are devoid of the natural enemies found in their original habitat uh, this is amazing okay uh, for them and uh, so they survive thrive very well okay um, so this i have taken from advances in ecological research of course uh, this hypothesis has been there for the couple of uh, decades um, uh, which is being worked out uh, there are a lot of uh, papers the publications which have come on this so we will not uh, dwell on this next one please okay uh, we have almost come to the end because i i want my talk to be very uh, simple straight forward so that we can answer a lot of questions otherwise i will uh, explain few more things what is the way out before that we will also ask certain questions climate change everyone is talking about one of the worst fallout of climate change is uh, is the invasive weeds why invasive weeds i have already shown uh, okay um that they they have lot of adaptability because they go with so many weapons allelopathy lot of inflorescence so they can attract the pollinators the uh, dispersal mechanism is very good whereas local plants are losing because local plants are there because they are adapted to that particular environment invasive weeds have come from somewhere because they are adapting to any environment okay wherever they go they are adapting to that particular environment but i have not shown certain things from our studies for example uh, we are, i have shown you that we, uh, our my student uh, dr patel has worked in and around goa though the weeds are there everywhere then we went on increasing the sample size for our environmental niche modeling Uh, outside our area we went to kolapur uh, we went up to pune we went up to nashik we took certain uh, uh, what is that no they spread wherever they are there we also took certain coordinates especially for parthenium and all from bangalore from coimbatore as you put more and more coordinates where they are there and the environmental niche modeling has shown that they are adapting they are in a different environmental conditions they are adapting to various environmental conditions which local plants are not able to adapt we know what uh, uh, are while introducing he was talking about no i was also working on endemic plants there are several reasons for endemic plants to remain in a small area one of them is they are adapted to that particular and en- those environmental conditions okay some plants are there throughout western ghats okay at least along the western ghats certain kind of common factors are there whereas some imagine parthenium which is there in pune which is there in kolapur which is there in darwad which is there in bangalore which is there in coimbatore <clears throat> almost all the uh, rain shed areas and each one altitude is different climatic conditions are different but they are spreading that means you should uh, uh, you look at their adaptability to various environmental conditions okay this is one 
if that is the case what is that which are making them to first establish then only it becomes invasive first it has to go there germinate establish then spread then become invasive these many steps are there and which we have seen especially on the plateaus what you call kathal okay table lands especially plateaus because our university is also there on the plateau and um, sometimes for plantation <clears throat> uh, in spite of advising not to go for tree plantation on the plateaus because it has got its own vegetation um, people uh, in the name of greening they go while doing that they dig they loosen the rock the gravel the soil or they put some new soil that is enough they go and establish there now along with your tree you are also bringing even if you are not bringing through the wind or something from adjacent area they come they go and establish there that means you have inoculum ready whenever some more disturbance happens for your home construction or some other building industrial construction etc etc they will go and establish there so what is the reason first and foremost the disturbance to the habitat this we see normally where do you see the weeds whether chromolina or whatever it is along the highways there may be thick forest highway is going through the thick forest on the road side you are actually disturbing them to keep them uh, without weeds okay you actually um, uh, deweed the area or you actually dig them uh, so that you can expand the road whatever it is this is where chromolina um, um, penicillium grass uh, so many things they are along this uh, highways that is the reason and already you have made way canopy has uh, been uh, disturbed so you get good sunlight disturbed soil is there you have already removed the competition and you uh, and the seeds have come and established so if you ask me single way of uh, avoiding them the root cause is disturbance degrading the habitat so i would say first don't degrade at least whatever habitats are remaining because already we have disturbed degraded the habitats there they have already established we have to see how to eliminate them which is a difficult task i will also talk about that right now so don't degrade this is the first and foremost thing which we are supposed to do okay already they have established how to do it and uh, can we put herbicides no because you are also killing the native plants the only way to do is consecutive years we have to go there before they flower identify the plants and uproot don't leave a single plant at least if you do it for a couple of years Uh, then at least for next 10 years we can be little safe and also as far as possible propagate uh, local plants there so that there will not be gaps so this is the second way of doing that's why i said uh, organizations like movement against biological invasions based in pune uh, i see them i am there in their group uh, i appreciate their initiatives same way uh, i have also seen uh, Uh, once i during the rainy season i went to shivaji university i saw some people selectively pulling some plants it was raining they were all wearing rain coat and they were doing when i went there they were all nss volunteers who have been trained to recognize the weeds and they were selectively pulling before they were coming to this so these are the ways to control and uh, next slide please so thank you so this is actually a preliminary introduction let us say because when we say 
uh, already experts know about this and this is for common people what is it what we should do what we should not do what are their characteristics why they are spreading and another one is uh, though i didn't say that you know a lot of uh, cultivable lands are becoming fallow fallow lands are another reason because already you have eliminated native vegetation and in those uh, extreme environments because you are irrigating them and cultivating something now you left them fallow and these people will go and establish okay so yeah uh, now i stop here if any questions are there i am ready to answer thank you sir such a nice information uh, i will request participants you can ask directly the question in, uh, to the sir and sir is uh, happy to give the answers uh, you can unmute yourself and ask the questions i think I put in chat box okay no yeah Yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I don't see any questions in chat box. So, if anything else is there, uh, maybe Sir? from Mission Devrai. Oh, great. I'm SD Mahajan. Sir, Namaskar, sir. One, nice I want to you. ask one, one question. I want to ask one say question. Yes, sir. Are there any Indian plants which have become aggressive in some other countries? uh sir I, I i don't have an answer for this uh, <laughs> because i am not aware uh, mm -hmm. one and uh, before that i would like to say that uh, sir nice meeting you uh, yeah. only i have heard your name uh, yeah. not ever, i think uh, uh, thank you very much uh, namaskar sir and uh, no uh, as far as my knowledge goes um, mm. i don't have uh, that maybe i don't have the information I don't have the information, anyway, but we are, we are also yeah. looking, sir, in our own country, whether something can become invasive. Of course, mm -hmm. with your caution, I am using this word. Yes, yes it is possible. Uh, maybe due to climate change, yes. uh, uh, it is possible. We are looking at. We were actually we are actually gathering certain data. Uh, uh. Uh, my one of my student was working, but unfortunately. She had to leave midway, uh, but yeah. whatever uh, uh, indications are there, yes, they can become invasive. Yes. Yes. Uh, the North Indian plant may be invasive in, in the southern parts of India and vice versa also. Yeah, possible, sir. Possible. Yeah. We can't rule out that. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Uh, uh, very, sir, very, I am nice, your, uh, uh, very nice your lecture. Uh, <laughs> Yes. Nice, nice meeting you. I, I am so blessed. Uh, thank, thank you very much. Uh, meeting you, sir. Yeah. Uh, anything else? Yeah. Sir, uh, can you focus something about, uh, there is some institute, no, which is basically working on Lantana. What type of uh, work they are doing? Uh, which one, sir? Because uh, I... I actually left working on weed some time back. Uh, which which institute you are talking about? I think one institute in Bangalore, they are uh, consolidating work on lantana only. Uh, for, uh, as a weed or for use? No, use, use. Ah, like that, there are many organizations, sir. Okay. There are many organizations, uh, especially NGOs and all. Okay, if you cannot beat uh, someone, you join them. That is the formula. Oh. Uh, okay, they have already established whether we can uh, do it for our economic uh, benefit. Uh, of course, they are uh, coming out with a lot of uh, product uh, from Lantana. That is one. Mm -hmm. But all said and done, sir, uh, I have seen in some um, uh, uh, wildlife sanctuaries, I don't want to name because uh, officers might get uh, offended if I mention. Uh, uh, so th they are not, uh, even elephants are not able to penetrate to through this. 
that much of a lantana invasion i heard that they are uh, somehow trying to remove and control them neither elephant nor tigers uh, nor herbivores if they want to escape they cannot escape even mm-hmm. uh, leave alone other things okay, yeah. uh, these things are there uh, but uh, uh, so see we may start using it as an economic benefit but that doesn't change the scenario uh, uh, that you know they are affecting the local biodiversity okay, okay. that is right. especially the wildlife yeah 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 okay yeah uh, uh hope uh, this is uh, of some uh, use this particular whatever yeah, i have no no definitely definitely sir thank you very much uh, saransa uh, mail id jar dila ta manje ha uh, sir can you give your mail id so those who want to contact you with the, any question for the Uh, yeah, I will uh, put it in the uh, yeah, chat box yeah. so that... Uh, Dr. Smita, any, uh, you want to ask something? Yeah, I, I sent it. Yeah. Uh, so you can uh, give any, raise any questions. There. Okay. So if that is the yes. case, I was uh, looking at 40-45 minutes lecture. That yes. So that... Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's why i went little early and okay i am so, i am sorry for the initial this one automatically it picked up my other uh, you know mic from the phone okay that is mm-hmm. why it was not audible to you yeah okay and phone i kept away uh, so that it will not disturb me <laughs> okay no problem sir thank you very much sir yeah a very informative lecture and uh, thank you all uh, especially mission devrai for me, uh, giving me this for giving me this opportunity uh, i don't know who else is talking on uh, uh, weeds uh, next lecture uh, on invasive weeds a uh, couple of uh, lectures you suggest no actually we are planning but unfortunately you are the first uh, i think upadya uh, madam talked to you and okay. uh, we are uh, we have one or two people and we are in touch with them okay okay yeah so, and once uh, it is final uh, we'll definitely send you the this thing also sure, you sure. can join definitely so yeah yeah